Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. You are about to watch a selected JSON lesson from our free course called JSON Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. Knowing how to create, parse, and manipulate JSON is essential in order to integrate FileMaker with the world of APIs, Claris Connect, artificial intelligence, and more. In this complete course, we'll cover everything you need to know about JSON from the perspective of a Claris FileMaker Pro developer. We're making this course available for free because we feel it's an important and essential building block for you to understand in order to advance your skills to the next level. And once you learn how to manipulate JSON formatted text, you are that much closer to accomplishing your first API integration in your own FileMaker apps. And like all our other courses at Productive Computing University, this course comes complete with downloadable FileMaker files for you to use and follow along with. These downloadable files are available directly in selected lessons inside the course. There's a link in the description to enroll in this free course called JSON Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Okay, now let's dive into the lesson. In this lesson, we learn about basic JSON parsing. So assuming that you've taken the first part of the course where we learn how to create JSON in a variety of ways, you are now well established to being able to read JSON, understand the difference between an object and an array, an element, you understand keys and values. So to parse it now will almost be trivial by comparison. Let me introduce you to the parsing tools that FileMaker gives you. I'll go to Tools and Data Viewer and we'll create a new expression in our watch window and start looking at this JSON here in my sample data. So the first function I'd like to introduce you to, it's called JSON List Keys. This will list all the keys in the JSON that it's looking at. Let me point it to the sample data here. And then let me just start by putting quote, quote, and there are all the keys. What this is telling you is that there is 22 records. We have zero through 21. Those are the records. Now, if I added these markers here, that will be looking at the very first record. It's showing us that the keys are company, country, email, first, last, skills, and website, this function returns this in alphabetical order, even though they were technically listed as first, last, email, company, website, skills, and country. So by putting this, that tells us to look at the first record. I could have also put a zero here, and it would do the exact same thing. So if I put a one, a two, or a three, it's technically looking at one, two, and three, as you see down here. But because the keys are the same name, it doesn't look like anything is changing. But technically speaking, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. Okay, so that's list keys. Now, I have another function, which is also handy, which is to list values. And it works the same way. It's just listing the value instead of the key. So let me start with quote, quote. So this is the value of the entire JSON. It's including everything except the preceding left bracket and the ending right bracket and it's listing the values, which is everything in the object. So how do I get more specific? Well, I could do left bracket, zero, right bracket, and now that's going to list just the first record and just the values for the first record. Notice how it's not listing the keys. It's not listing first, last email company, but it is listing tech solutions, country, USA, John Doe, etc. I tend to use list keys and values when I'm discovering a large piece of JSON for the first time so I can get my head around the structure in a programmatic way. By listing the keys, it tells me how many records within a given path. By listing the values, it gives me an idea of the data that's included in that path. But when it comes to pulling an individual field from an individual record, you'll use a third function I'd like to introduce you to, which is called JSON get element. In this case, we'll point it to the JSON, and we need to include the key, index, or path. So if I put quote, quote, I get the entire JSON that it's looking at, including the preceding bracket and ending bracket. If I want to pull just the first record, I get the entire first record, including the keys. So the keys and the values, it's giving me the entire object, everything from here to here. Now, if I want to pull a specific field for that record, I can just put a dot 
and the word email, for example, and now I'll get the value of the key email. As I change this from a zero to a one, it simply iterates through to the next record and then a two to the next record and so forth. So when you're pulling JSON in a script, you'll be iterating over this number here to run through the records in a given array. Keep in mind that a lot of JSON will include multiple arrays under multiple keys. So it can be quite complex. So, and in most cases, you'll have a complete path here before you hit the array. But there are times where JSON is presented here, starting with an array and only the array. Okay, so that, that worked out pretty well. Let's now change things up a little bit and let me copy this piece of JSON from our Makaroo and I'll paste that here. Let me do it as a new record so we have two records to compare it to. All right, perfect. Now we'll do the same thing. First, we'll list keys. So JSON list keys, we wanted to look at the JSON and we want to do quote, quote. So in this case, we have probably a thousand because that's what I asked for. Yeah, 999 on a zero based index is 1000 records. So we know we have 1000 records. And if I were to list the values here, quote, quote, I'll get all the values within the whole data set because I haven't specified a particular record. But if I wanted a particular record, I could do that here, zero. And now these are just the values just for the first record. If I wanted to see record 1000, I'd actually put in 999 and there's record 1000 for that. So that's list keys and values. Now let me do JSON get element. And we will do quote, quote, which should give us the entire list of JSON. Then I'll put in the first record. Now we get the keys and the values for the first record. Now I can immediately at any time just format this. JSON format elements and then just surround this. And now I can see it much more visual for when I'm pulling this data. So if I wanted to pull record 500, I would put in 499, record 500. Okay, let me temporarily take it out of the formatting. And we'll just comment this out for now. We'll use that later. So now that I've got record number 500, I can pick a certain field and I'll just do gender and that indicates mail, or I can do IP underscore address, and that will give me the IP address. Okay, let's go do something a lot more advanced here in the same lesson. I'll go to the core and we'll run that script. And we'll run that script to execute all JSON for the layout sales. Okay, and then I will go to the data viewer and copy that JSON here to FileMaker. And I'll make that record three. Paste. Okay, now we've got some very advanced JSON by comparison. And let's go to the data viewer and analyze this. So just like I did before, we'll start with the keys. So JSON keys or list keys, the JSON we're looking at is in FileMaker, and then I'll put quote, quote. Now, believe it or not, we only have two keys, messages and response. So now that I know those keys, I can type the messages part of the key to see if there's any keys within that. There doesn't seem to be. And then response has two keys that are, one is data and one is data info. So if I did data dot data, now here is my data, there's my 100 records. And what was the other one? Data info. So response.data info. And that's sort of the summary at the end. So you can see the power of first listing the keys to get oriented around where you want to target to parse your data. By listing the keys first, starting at the outmost key, which is nothing specified here in the quotes, and then driving into deeper and deeper keys, that's how you can identify your data. So we are going to want to have response.data as our primary path.
path if we want the records from the sales orders. Now I'll target the first record. And now we have additional keys, field data, mod ID, portal data, etc. So I'll do a dot field data. Also, this is case sensitive. And now here are all my keys for the field data. So essentially, these are all the fields. This is the blueprint that drives exactly where we need to be as my prefix or my path to get to the fields. And I did all that very quickly using this one function, JSON list keys, and driving deeper and deeper and deeper. So now, armed with that information, I will copy this to the clipboard. And I'll comment this out here right in Data Viewer, and then start with my JSON get element and start using this right away by putting in this path. I'll just paste it right here. And now I've got JSON coming back. And now it's just a matter of getting what I want. So I can put um, dot account created. And there it is, admin. If I want the timestamp created, I have that there. So this would be the complete path to timestamp created for the first record in the response data of that very elaborate JSON. So you can see the power of this parsing, but you can also see the simplicity in it. By listing your keys first, there's a lot less guessing and you don't even have to read through the data. You let the function do the talking. Now coming up soon in this course, you'll see an advanced lesson which takes a realistic approach to parsing advanced JSON for contacts, invoices, and invoice line items all within the same text document or JSON payload, as it were. And I show you a total of three loops to accomplish that and keep track of your individual IDs so that you maintain your index record by record, pulling field by field into a FileMaker database. I think it's a great exercise in learning how to parse real-world JSON in a real-world system. So now I encourage you to create your own sample data using one of the techniques you learned in the previous lesson, and then parse that data into FileMaker, at the very least into this data viewer, so you can get an idea of how to parse JSON and how to analyze complex JSON using the list keys and list values functions. Then when you're ready and you have your arms around that, Join me on the advanced section of the course where we take a complex piece of JSON that includes contacts, invoices, and invoice line items, and we parse that record by record, table by table, into a FileMaker file, paying close attention to our multiple loops, which are nested within each other, and understanding common ways we keep track of our IDs to keep all our indexes in check as we pull multiple records into multiple tables. Thanks for joining us on this lesson. To enroll in the free complete course, click on the link in the description or visit ProductiveComputingUniversity.com where you'll find both free and paid courses on today's most important topics related to the Claris FileMaker platform.